are back at the NVIDIA booth here at the GDC Technology Theater. I'd like to introduce Greg Smith. He's going to be talking about Tegra Profiler Revealed. Take it away. The developer tools team, and today I'm going to talk about the Tegra Profiler. This is our new multi-core uh, CPU profiler for Tegra platforms. We offer a number of different tools to help you get started with Android development. We have an uh, Android development pack that will help you get everything installed on your system in minutes. Uh, we have a debug manager in Eclipse to help you get native debugging working. Uh, a graphics uh, performance analyzer and debugger for OpenGL ES. And a Tegra profiler that can look at the new four core Tegra, prof uh, Tegra CPU. So if we look at what we offer you as a developer, we have a solution that encompasses Windows, Mac OS X, and Linux. And the first thing that you're going to do is get the Tegra Android Development Pack. What this offers you is the long list of you need to go download this, all condensed into one installer for you. And so you get the Android SDK and NDK, the most recent versions. You get the Java Development Kit, and you get Eclipse with the Android Development Tools. This will take you about 50, 10 to 15 minutes to get download and install, as opposed to several hours searching the web for the right versions. The second thing we offer is the Tegra Android Toolkit. So this is everything specific to, to Tegra. So you'll get the tools, which I'm going to talk about. You get documentation on what's different about Tegra, how you can optimize for it. And you also get the samples. The last thing you get is Android OS images for the last three releases, Gingerbread, Honeycomb, and Ice Cream Sandwich. You can use these on your reference platforms. These are not meant for your OEM consumer devices. Uh, most of our tools will now work on unrooted devices. So in order to get this stuff, you can go up to developer.nvidia.com, develop for Tegra. And there's links for these three different components. And again, these will work on all three different platforms. Registration should just take a few minutes. We're just trying to figure out what area you're working on so we can put time into that area. OK, so going into the three different tools we offer for native developers. So when you're doing Android, you have to make the decision between how much Java code you're going to write and how much native code you're going to write. And Android doesn't really provide much in the way of native tools. So what we offer is an NVIDIA Debug Manager. This pulls together the NDK tools from Android, uh, an optimized GDB server that's meant for Tegra, and adds additional scripts to Eclipse. So when you want to start a native project and you hit debug, you can have a breakpoint in your native application and immediately hit it. You don't have to start the Java application, go find the other native project, attach with GDB server. It just takes all those manual steps that you have to do on other platforms out of the equation, you have one button, and you can hit your breakpoints and start working. The second tool is Perfide ES. This supports OpenGL ES 2.0 debugging. So you basically can capture your frames, look at real-time performance counters, identify bottlenecks, and you can edit your shaders in real time. The third tool is the new one that I'm going to talk about today. It's our Tegra Profiler. This is for looking at our new multi-core ARM CPU and identifying bottlenecks and determining how well you're using the multi-core CPU. So what is the Tegra Profiler? The Tegra Profiler is a sampling profiler. This lets us do frequency-based sampling across the entire system. We can either look at what's happening on the system or what's happening in your application. This also helps you identify how many of the four cores you're utilizing. So a lot of the apps right now are single-threaded. You can quickly see if you add threads to yours how much of the different cores you're using. You can also see when the cores are being turned off or when the cores are being scaled down in terms of frequency. This will help you quickly identify CPU hotspots. We also expose some of the ARM PMU uh, performance counters for L1 and L2 cache, so you can see how you're using the cache subsystem. Um, the tool also makes it very easy to start a profiling session. It either help you download your application to the device, and it will also help you launch the intent that will launch your application. So what is a sampling profiler, and how is this different from some of the other tools? Well, again, a sampling profiler is going to, you're going to set a frequency at which you want to sample. At that sample, we're going to collect different types of information. We can collect the uh, PC counter. We can collect a backtrace for that PC sample. And we can collect 
PM counters. The pros of this is that we're going to have minimal overhead to your application, and you can adjust the frequency to determine how much overhead you're willing to tolerate. Uh, the, the lower the frequency, obviously, the longer you're going to want to run your application to get a representative uh, number of samples. Again, this can be system-wide. So we can collect kernel information, library information, and information on, on your application. The results actually are at the instruction level, and then we'll roll them up to the function level right now on the module level. And again, this works with production code, though I'll go into some limitations shortly on what you have to do to make sure that this works for you. The cons of this, it's not 100% accurate. We're doing a statistical sample. So if you have a lot of small functions and you don't take a long enough sampling period, we are likely to miss some of your functions. This should usually be a first path for optimization. And then once you narrow it down to a smaller region, you can look at using an instrumented profiler um, that would be, for example, inside of GCC compiler toolchain. So I'm going to switch over to a video. And we, we do have live demos of this working in our booth that we can show afterwards. So when you go to use the profiler, the first thing you're going to do is launch the Tegra profiler. And this is a standalone Windows application. Right now, this profiler only works on Windows. I'll show you the roadmap at the end. We will be expanding it to support Mac OS and Linux. So in the application, what you're going to do is say you want to analyze an application. You can pull down this menu and select sample an application. This is going to create a new settings editor for you to say what you're interested in doing. We'll pull the devices that are connected through ADB. You can choose which of the targets you're interested. And as you choose them, we will show you some basic information about the device you're connected to. You then want to pick which package you're interested in deploying or launching. And so in this case, you can either say, I want to deploy to the device and pick something off your local hard drive and have it deployed for you. Or you can click Select from a device. And when you go and hit the Browse, it's going to look for all installed applications on your device. And you can easily pick one. We'll also look at your manifest and show you all the intents that you can use to start your application. Uh, there is a default intent for most applications. So you can just use that regularly. The next thing you're going to want to do is decide what type of information you want to collect. And so this is a sampling uh, profiler. And so the first thing we'll do is expand this and pick what rate we want to collect data at. And so again, this rate is going to determine how long you want to capture for and how much data you're going to get. You can go very high frequency, but you're going to add some additional overhead. So the one choice you can make really is what frequency you want and whether you want to show backtrace or not. Backtrace adds significant overhead. So you'll notice the uh, drop down for low will change between, I think it's a, uh, 100 hertz and 1,000 hertz, whether you have that turned on or not. The next thing you can do is choose from some of the ARM PMU counters and the L2 cache counters and have those collected at the same time. So, and the last thing you do is decide when you want to capture. We can either start capturing immediately when your application is launched. We can give you a button so you can manually start and stop. Or we can start after a certain time period. Similarly, for stop, we can manually stop. Or we can do it after a few seconds. So when this happens, um, there's actually a button in the bottom right-hand corner that you can hit Begin. That will launch your application. Then you'll have a Start button, which I, I pass by. You can start capturing and then hit Stop. Once that occurs, the data will be transferred back to the, the host system, and the UI will show the resulting capture. You can do multiple runs of just start stopping. You don't have to relaunch the application. So also, we do uh, grab all the line, sorry, all the symbol tables out of all the executables that were loaded. So there's no additional work for you with the bug symbolics. Once the application comes up, you're going to see two different areas of the UI. The first one is the counters UI. So this is the cycle count coming from each of the cores that are running and the L1 or L2 counters if you select them. When you look over at the right, the total tells you how much of the CPU is being used. This is an aggregate of all four cores with 100% being the maximum. And then the self column for the individual cores is how much of your application was using of that core. And what you'll see is the maximum height of these rows is the maximum frequency of the device. So on a uh, transformer prime, this will be 1.4 gigahertz. And so that top will never scale with the frequency scaling. So you can see if your thread's running 100% of the time and we scale down to 50% CPU, you'll only see that will max out at 50% height. 
The second part of the tool is the source correlate or the, the function correlation. And so when we sample, we're either collecting the PC where we'll get a flat sample, or we're collecting a backtrace in which we can give you a hierarchical profile. And I'll let the, the video catch up real quick. So when you look at this right now, we're in a top-down view. And so that's going to show you your main entry point. Uh, because of some problems with some of the libraries, sometimes you'll get multiple top nodes that you can mine down. And then anything that's in the kernel is going to be consolidated into a, a kernel node. You can then expand this tree. And what you're going to look for is the total is how much time or how many samples that were collected were in this function. And the self is how many of the samples were actually in that actual function call and not one of its children's. So what you want to do is just kind of mine down through whoever has the highest total, looking then for who has the highest self. And that's what you're going to want to target as your optimization. Another way to look at this, though, is we have a bottom-up view. So on the bottom of this, you can switch to bottom-up view at any time. This is basically going to have a node for every single function that had a sample. If you do that in sort by self column, these are going to be the individual functions as leak nodes that you want to optimize first. And you will be able to walk back up and figure out who is calling these. So I'm going to switch back and um, go over the limitations for the Tegra profiler. So one of the things, if you end up using the backtrace option, which is, is really what you should be using as a default option initially, uh, there's some issues with capturing backtraces on ARM. The first thing you need to do is do no omit frame pointer. If you do this, any function that has this turned on, is this going to roll up into its parent function? And you're not going to see the details you want. So we recommend you recompile with this turned off. This is an optimization. So in your release builds, you may want to turn this back on, though there is a very minimal impact when you, with this optimization. The second thing is we don't support backtrace right now if you have thumb code. So we're only supporting ARM32 code right now, and we'll be working to have better support for thumb code in the future. Uh, also, you'll notice sometimes you're pretty sure you have a long function. You should see samples in it. There are some compiler optimizations that cause the backtrace to fail. So you might also want to look at the parent node that you might know is calling it to see if that has a high sample count. Uh, and the lastly, we don't support LLVM-based code bases right now. They have a slightly different backtrace. And since this backtrace algorithm is implemented in the kernel, we're still developing that and hopefully in the, the future devices that, that will be enabled. So in terms of a roadmap, we announced the 1.0 tools and put them up for download in January. Um, actually, it was end of December, beginning of January. And then we have a new Tegra 1.1 uh, tool that we're showing in our booth, so please come down and see us. And we've extended it with a number of interesting features. Previously, we were only sample-based. The new feature we're adding is we collect thread state information from the OS. So as your application is running, we're also collecting context switches. This can help you determine why your threads are blocking. So you can see if, if you have I.O. calls, for example, you're going to start seeing your threads turn red in the thread state. Um, the second thing is we added is OpenGL ES frame capture. So you can pick what your frame delimiter is. It's the same as our PerfHUD ES tool. And you're going to see those indicated on the timeline now. So that will help you see the different lengths of your, your frames. And um, lastly, we have a library called uh, MVTX that's supported in Parallel Insight, which is our uh, desktop platform tools. This has now been added into the Tegra profiler. This allows you to annotate your source code, and you can get per thread a nested level of where you are in your application. And it's very easy to go and throw these markers into your code. And um, you can basically use this as a different level than a source level profiler. It's basically going to say, I'm drawing this part of my frame, or I'm doing I.O. and reading my textures in right now. And you can mouse over that and see what the duration of that section is. In uh, third quarter, we're going to be looking at extending not necessarily the feature set as much as the platforms that we support. So the UI is going to be hosted on Mac OS and Linux. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is the profiling data I showed you right now is only at a function level. We'll be taking that down to the source level. You'll have some additional steps that you need to do to generate line table information. It'll make your build times a little bit longer, but it doesn't add anything to your, or it doesn't change your performance characteristics at all. And then in the future, we're looking at doing a number of different things. Firstly, if you're on Windows, we're looking at integrating into Visual Studio, similar to how Parallel Insight is done. We're going to support comparing um, multiple runs with your profiling data. We're going to have system-wide sampling. So we actually, we actually sample at a system level right now and can tell you that you're not in your application. 
But in our UI, we don't identify what you're doing. We just say that you are doing something in a different process. And so we'll, we'll show those other processes. The other thing, we're going to add locks and waits. So one of the biggest problems with multi-core is threading and your different types of synchronization primitives. We'll be identifying where those are. And you can see if you're stalling on mutexes, and that's causing you to use less of the CPU resources than you would like. And we'll also be adding uh, expert system to help identify different bottlenecks that you have in your code and give you kind of a top level items of where you should focus your attention for improving your performance. Uh, lastly, we're going to add an instrumenting profiler. So it would still be recommended that you'll use a sampling profiler to get an idea where your hotspots are. And then you can turn the instrumenting profiler on just for uh, some of those areas. And that will give you extremely detailed and accurate results because we'll be capturing the entry and exit to every function. So uh, that's what we're offering developers right now. I definitely recommend you look at the tools, even if you're not working on Tegra platforms. Um, please go download the Android development kit. It'll get you started real quick. And then you can look at our documentation. And I, I think you'll be convinced with our samples and stuff. You're, you're definitely going to do your native development on Tegra platform and target that as your, your primary platform. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, if you don't want to ask them now, I'll be over in the end of the booth over here. And we're showing Perf IDS and the Tegra profiler. Also, if you have any questions, Stephen Jones is our project manager for this. You can send him emails at uh, sjones at nvidia.com.